Your your Drew's ready. Yeah. What? No, that I can't go. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah. Tell me about it. But I got my own game. You know, whatever. Sure. Whatever. Uh, all right. So I guess I start. Hey everybody, I'm Kyle sure. Rosdahl. Welcome back to Make Me Smart. Because you know I start. That's what the instructions say. Uh, what we do on this podcast is we make today make sense most of the time. Hey, I'm Andy. Most you learned for Kimberly Adams. Thank you so much for joining us for Economics on Tap, whether you're listening on the podcast or you're watching us on the YouTube live stream where I was just talking about the sweatshirt that I'm wearing. We're going to win on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I we'll don't know. All right. So we're going to do what we always do, a little news, a little half full, half empty uh, with the audience poll, of course. Uh, yep. I'm not drinking today because I'm going to get my flu shot. And I believe one should be sober oh. when one gets medical treatment. So uh, I'm going to sure. do that. Uh, Mr. Euler, are you uh, partaking there in Austin? I am. I am. I'm drinking a what's called a super awesome lager from Austin Beer Works. That's actually oh. the name of the beer. Uh, super light, interesting, super refreshing, really nice. Very nice. Yeah. There you go. I can yeah. go. For, well, I, I will. I will get one after I get my my medical treatment. But we'll see. Fair enough. Let's uh, tell you what. Let's go to the uh, let's go to the chat here. We have an Oktoberfest Marzen from Kristen Schroeder. There you good. Uh, nice. let's see. I don't even know. Hot toddy are you, are you somewhere. I, I hope it's cold. Is there a hot toddy? Seriously? <laughs> Apparently. Oh God. Kay Gilbert's having a bourbon, coffee, cinnamon, vanilla martini. That's a lot going on in that martini, Kay. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mitchell's rye and a big old ice cube. That's cool. Okay. That's cool. Spot in Oktoberfest from WW. Thanks. Cheryl Lynch from Spindrift Lime. Uh, did I say Euler was dead to me earlier this week? Tamara Haynes. No, that was, that was, that was, that was Matt Levin after that. Oh, I want a right. Dolly generated picture of Kai eating a sandwich in space in the style of Van Gogh, which if you haven't seen it yet, we'll put it in the show notes. It's a deeply That's disturbing true. picture that, that, uh, actually looks a little bit like me, which is probably the most disturbing part of it. So <laughs> uh, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? Sarah Schlosser says she is, in fact, chilly in NorCal, LOL. She's probably the one having the hot toddy. That's so, uh, so there we go. There we go. Cool. All right. Uh, why don't you go with some news there, Mr. Euler? Yeah. So so we heard that Exxon has just massive, massive um, mm-hmm. earnings, right? And so what happened was apparently Joe Biden doesn't take too kindly to that. <laughs> and so he... Uh, yeah. He called out uh, the CEO of ExxonMobil and said, basically, you should be lowering gas prices. I don't really know how you do that if you're the president uh, or if you're a CEO of of an oil and gas company. But uh, you should be sort of paying back um, the American public by lowering gas prices. ExxonMobil sort of shot back, which is interesting because the Biden administration has been, you know, they've taken shots. This is the first time ExxonMobil has come out and said, hey, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and we're returning money to investors, which I saw some tweets about this. It's a super interesting Mm -hmm. conversation, right? They have a fiduciary responsibility to do what's best for their stockholders. Right. I mean, that's, that's a fair argument. I I get the politics of it. All right. All right. right. Hold on. So, so, so two things. Number one, it was really interesting to me that the Exxon Mobil CEO came out and said, we are returning value to Americans by uh, giving money to our shareholders. And yep. the Biden administration, Biden in a tweet today said, yeah, I, I don't think that giving money to your shareholders is the same as returning value to Americans. So there's that. But look, yep. the, the whole shareholder value trope about which we did a whole <laughs> series, it's probably got to be yep. 10 years ago now, right? Let, let's six let's translate ago. that into, was it six? All right, good. Well, thank <laughs> I you. Was in, I was in year one. Um, so I've been here for seven years. Oh my God. Oh good. my God. Yeah. Is it really only been seven years? It feels longer than that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's try stakeholders instead of shareholders, right? Because you okay. want customers, you want the public, you want whatever. And, and I guess, I guess my comment is if we want, we have given companies and corporations in this economy, lots of political rights. Um, yeah. most recently with citizens United and, and also with labor unions, they got the right to have political speech. And I think if we're going to give, um, corporations and other organizations rights, they should, uh, understand some kind of an obligation to society. Uh, okay. And among those obligations to society is to be acting in the vested interests of all stakeholders, not just shareholders. I'll get off my soapbox mm. now. That's what I think. No, 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 no. That's, that's fair. You're, you're you're exactly right. But it's, that's a that's a bigger conversation that we, we we and we say this. I feel like you and I say this all the time on this podcast. Like yeah. that's a big yeah. conversation that we probably need to be having. 
You know, especially yeah. when we're talking about things like climate change and we're talking about things like the energy transition. That's a really right. big conversation about how capitalism and how this economy works in that sort of thing. And, and it's a weird yeah, and awkward totally. conversation that we need to be talking about. Yeah. And, and just, you know, to, to go from, from yesterday's conversation that, that yeah. you brought about, you know, we need to use more, but we can't use more. And, and we've got these companies who are making a lot of money doing this. So uh, Lisa Abramowitz at, at Bloomberg put up a great chart today. Hmm. ExxonMobil in 2022 estimated earnings are going to be more than Amazon, Procter & Gamble, and Tesla put together, Combined. which is cray cray. It's insane. It is. It is. Insane. You're saying, right? So there we go. Huh. All right. What so here's mine. And, um, and I, I don't know how I feel about this, and I really don't want to be the, hey, you kids get off my lawn guy. But apparently, and this is a, a story in Politico, there's a startup bit there, out there that is pushing and has the backing of, of some heavy, heavy hitters in Washington, including Jason Furman, who used to run the Council of Economic Advisors for uh, the Obama administration and, and a bunch of others. They are lobbying the Commodities Futures Trading Commission uh, to sign off on a proposal to legalize political prediction markets in this country, which is to say, wagering in a form on politics. And we talk about this a lot, right? There are nominal uh, political betting markets in this economy, and they certainly exist overseas. But the idea of actually putting money on um, which way politics is going to turn out seems to me to be deeply troubling. Now, economists use these markets as a reasonably reliable indicator of how mm -hmm. things are going to go, right? Because if people are yeah. betting money, they really believe, and thus money follows votes and all this jazz. Yeah, um, putting their money where their mouth is, I right? Just, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and and I just don't know how I feel about this. The consumer, uh, sorry, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, this political piece goes on, is weighing the decision behind closed doors this week. It has long resisted efforts to open up political betting in the United States thing, on the grounds that the products would effectively represent a type of gambling. Now, I don't, I don't want to make a value judgment on gambling here. I just want to make a value judgment on further challenging the political process in this country. Hmm. That's where I am. And so do you think, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, these, these sort of informal markets, you know, predict it? Um, I mean, right. Yeah, no, I have, I have, I have a balance sheet and I have, you know, I think it's, I think it's interesting. I think, you know, um, I talk with my buddies about this all the time, sort of, you know, betting on politics is it's, it's betting, but you know, it's mm -hmm. weird. Um, and it's also it's weird. It's weird because betting on a sports game and betting on the outcome of the Phillies and the Astros tonight it's not going to affect you and me and, right. uh, you know, sort of how we live our lives, betting on, you know, whether or not a bill gets passed. <laughs> I'm with you. It just That's feels weird. Just feels yeah. weird. Feels weird. Feels weird. Yeah. So I just want to get that out there. Uh, yeah. All right. Shall we? We Play shall. Again. True. We're going we're gonna to do the game. Half full, half empty is the game. A lot of chatter about beer, by the way, in the chat. Uh, half full, half empty is the game. Drew Jostat's host, uh, and we're going to do all y'all on uh, the last question. Everybody on the YouTube live stream, if you're listening to this, not on Friday afternoon. Sorry. Drew. <laughs> First topic, are you half full or half empty on paper election ballots instead of voting machines? Oh, that's so interesting, given what we were just talking about. Look, sure um, I... Th yeah, so um, uh, electronic voting machines with auditable paper trails is where I am. I'm all the way full on that, um, and that's what I got. Yeah, no, I'm half empty on, way half empty on. I mean, I I, I don't worry about the integrity of the voting yeah. happening on, on, on machines. Right. I'm just I'm I'm done with that. I think I think right. it's scapegoating. Um, yep. So I'm I'm it's yeah. it's fake news. It's the whole deal. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, not even yeah. not even entertaining that one. Go, Same. Drew. Shot you down there, didn't we, pal? <laughs> yeah, I'm crushed. Uh, <laughs> are you half full or half empty hmm. on AI art? Oh, huh. so this is the thing we were talking about uh, a second ago, I think, before the before we started rolling. Yeah, yeah. So Matt yeah. Levitt, was, was it before we started rolling or after? I forget. Um, and I should just tell you what's going on outside my window. So I got these guys spinning the house, and they're up on all kinds of ladders. So I'm just like, you know checking them out making sure nobody fall. Anyway, I should turn my camera around, but but I can't do that. Sure. Uh, so where were we? Oh, AI art. Matt Levin did a piece for us on Marketplace earlier this week, 
talking about artists who are like being challenged by AI generated art. And it's kind of an issue if you're an artist. And one of the things Matt did was he went to this uh, AI generated art uh, bot, I guess, called Dolly. And he told it he wanted a picture of uh, me in space eating a sandwich. Oh, I did say this after we started uh, in the style of Van Gogh. And we'll put that on the show page. It's deeply, deeply disturbing. Um, I have no strong feelings about it. I suppose I'm I'm half empty on behalf of the artists who are getting hosed in competitions. But, uh, you know, it's a week half empty. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I'm sort of with you, too. I, I'm half empty because... Yeah, for the I, I think for the artists, right? Like if you're if you're pressing a button and and yeah. and, and, and I, I don't know, maybe there's an argument to be made that you, the the human, are sort of influencing what the computer is doing. And uh, but I'm sort of like, no, you know, it, it's sort of the opposite of the paper ballot argument, right? Like I think you you know you put right. you, you put the art on paper, right? I don't know, right? I, yes, exactly. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. Yeah. Put the art on paper. And uh, uh, Drew, what else, Jeff Kai? It's freaky. Uh, I have not seen this seen picture it? of Kai. Is it also completely <laughs> freaky? Yeah, it looks like it was uh, actually Mid Journey, not Dolly. But, but anyway, but, it's still <laughs> yeah. But 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 the weird part is, it does kind of look like me. Oh, uh, that's awesome! Right? I love it. It kind of does. Yeah. Which is which is yeah. the deeply disturbing part. So anyway. What's next, Drew? Next Anywho. story right, comes to us from Reuters. Uh, this week, President Biden said he was uh, looking to crack down on f- surprise fees consumers are forced to pay on things like concert tickets, hotels, and airfares. Are you half full or half empty? Sure, I'm, I'm half full on that. I mean, yeah. cracking down is oh, one thing, and regulation and sort of regulating how you do that is another. Um, but yeah. No, if you can get rid of those fees and you can get yeah. rid of sort of people being taken advantage of because of whatever, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's the whole Good resort fee it. thing, right? <laughs> you, you you book yeah. the hotel yeah. room, you go, and then you get your bill, and there's a seventy three dollar resort fee, and you're like, for reals? Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of where I'm on. That. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like transparency, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Half full. Uh, or wait, half, is it, wait, oh, is this the last one? This is not. Nope. This is not the last one, nope. right? Okay. No, no, no. All right. I'll, I'll tell you. Half full right. or half empty on radio host Halloween costumes. <laughs> <laughs> so there was, there was this meme going around this week sure. of like weird and completely fake as most memes. Are. Uh, that's not true. Memes aren't fake. Um, uh, uh, some radio host. And it was like the business reporter guy. And it was a kid in a suit and a tie and whatever. And clearly it was some riff on me. I'm half full if people want to do that. You know, we should put that on the show page too. I don't know who's in charge of that, but. Sure. But if we can find that, sure. we put it I mean, oh, it, 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 it does sort of, you know, it, 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 it brings to mind though, having a, having a face for radio and that joke that everybody likes to make with me. Right. Um, oh, I mean, now we're on YouTube, so, but yeah, sure. I'm right. half full. Yeah. That's why right. not? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ex- yeah. Freak exactly. All right. Uh, so this is the last one, Drew, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So those of you on the live stream, uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do the poll. Uh, And I will try not to spoil it like I did last week. So get your votes in early, vote early, vote often. Um, And Drew, let's give us a question. Are you half full or half empty on political candidates turning to TikTok to campaign? Wow, didn't see that one coming. Okay, so here's the question for the YouTube live stream. Drew, hit it again just to make sure they heard it. Half full or half empty on candidates campaigning on TikTok? All right. So we're going to wait like like 10 or second, maybe 15. All sure. y'all can get your votes in. And then and then uh, I'll go and then Euler can go. And then we'll read the polls because somebody will conveniently put it, I'm sure, in the chat or something. Or I can wait, I can just do that, right? Can I just do that? Nope, can't do that. What am I doing? Nope, that's not working. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Whatever. They're the processes. Yes, no. All right, Euler, where are you? What do you, what do you think about politicians? Came- oh, it was a story on tech. That's what it was. It was a it was okay. a thing that um, I think Jesus reported it for Kimberly I think nice uh, about politicians doing all kinds of stuff on TikTok meet them where they are meet sure. them where they are oh all man right. so I'm I'm totally into that right like yeah yeah I'm I'm half full without a doubt um, I mean I am, it's gonna look weird and and politicians are going to just be awkward and 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 inherently sort of stodgy especially on a platform that's new and that they don't understand <laughs> but, right but yeah, no, I'm I'm sort of meet them where they are. I mean, 
you know, even even us, we 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 do these things, and we kind of have to, have to adjust as well. So why the hell not? Yeah, I feel like that's my yeah, that's that's so the through line of of me today. Why the hell not? <laughs> I, 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 why the hell not? Right? Uh, yeah. So I'm half full in it too. This is really interesting though, because uh, the listenership of this particular podcast is not 175 votes. Um, yes, 42 percent they like it. No, 58 percent they don't. And wow. I, you all, all y'all just got to wow. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, no. that's pretty close. So here, Ryan, Ryan Coleman, here's the question. When you are on TikTok, do you have to say you approve the message? Is it a political ad? Will it be regulated? Oh. So here's the deal with TikTok. On TikTok, sure. they don't take paid political ads. And also, they're not governed by the Federal Communications Commission and election laws. So they don't actually have to say that stupid, I support this, I approve this message thing. Yeah. But some of them are a little cringe, which is the challenge is what I'm saying. And, and, you know, nobody needs a politician who's kind of cringe. So that makes sense. There you go. Yep. So interesting. 40% All right, no. All right. So there we go. What we think? Boom. There's another Friday in the books. <laughs> courtesy right of on. Drew Jostad and everybody else who produces this podcast and you'll fill in in for us. We are done. Make me smart is back next week. I think Emily's back. I don't really know. Uh, but if yep. you've got questions, you want us to answer for what do you want? Well, <laughs> listen to this. Hang on a minute. Nice. But if you've got questions that you need us to answer for, what do you want to know Wednesday? I'm sorry, I got something caught in my throat. Related to the economy, business, culture, tech, take your pick. You know what to do. Here's somebody to tell you how to do just that. Our number is 408-UB-SMART. You can leave us a voicemail. Email works as well. You can just reach out to make me smart at marketplace.org. That's, that's 508. Did I, what did I say? I do that every time, don't I? I don't know. 508. Yeah. We'll fix it in post. Or we'll just fix it right now. You're good. We'll just fix it right now. <laughs> Make Me Smart is produced by Marissa Cabrera and Courtney Bergsicker. Today's episode was engineered by Drew Jostad, who also wrote the theme music to Half Full, Half Empty. The team behind our Friday game is Mel Rosenberg and Emily McCune. Bridget Bodner is our senior producer, but she is working on Million Bazillion at the moment. Check that out when it comes out. The director of On Demand is Donna Tam. You gonna watch the game tonight? No, no. Yeah, you know my stance on the Astros. Lifetime. I do.